Good morning, Hank. It's Wednesday. I have a zit so big that when I get close to the camcorder, my camcorder believes that my zit is a face. I mean, frankly, Hank, this zit is so big that I've begun to wonder whether it's going to develop self-consciousness. And because of that, I've been thinking about conjoined twins. So, Hank, I thought I would one-up your top five video from Monday and give you top six pairs of conjoined twins in history. Which is actually, not to brag or anything, kind of a top 12. Number six, the Biddenden Maids. Mary and Eliza Chokers were conjoined twins who left five plots of land when they died to benefit the poor of their town, Biddenden. And for the last 500 years, continuing up to today, every Easter, there's lots of stuff for the poor people in this town, thanks to Mary and Eliza. In addition to like bread and cheese and stuff, pensioners and widows also get Biddenden cakes, which are these like massively disgusting biscuits printed with conjoined twins on them. Like one 19th century historian referred to them as not by any means tempting. Anyway, Hank, let that be a lesson to you. If you leave your money to charity, they will print your face on disgusting biscuits forever. But if you leave your money to your brother, he will spend it. Number five, Giacomo and Giovanni Tocci. Giacomo and Giovanni were conjoined twins with two heads, four arms, and two legs. And like a lot of conjoined twins, they spent pretty much their entire childhood on the freak show circuit. In fact, the Tocci twins spent like five years touring America, during which time Mark Twain heard about them, which inspired him to write Those Extraordinary Twins, and also inspired indirectly the great novel Puddinhead Wilson. So basically, without the Tocci twins, Mark Twain is a lesser novelist. See, and people say that the history of conjoined twindom is not interesting. Stop looking at my zit. Number four, Laura and George Chappell who are still living and who despite sharing 30% of their brain matter have very different lives. Lori works part-time at a hospital laundry. George is a professional country singer. By the way, they're both female. All conjoined twins are identical. It's like an autonomous region of John Green. Number three, Jody and Mary, not their real names. So in 2000, conjoined twins were born in the United Kingdom, Jody and Mary. Jody was the stronger of the two twins. Her heart basically pumped for Mary's blood system. Mary was a separate person with a separate brain, but she couldn't survive without Jody. Doctors determined that both twins would inevitably die unless they were separated, but if they were separated, Mary would die immediately. Mary and Jody's parents didn't want them to be separated, but a court ordered the procedure as expected. Mary died, Jody survived, and in fact is still alive today. And the case raised all kinds of difficult questions about personhood and medical ethics, a discussion that I'm sure will continue in the comments. Number two, Chang and Ang, the stars of this great book, God's Fool. Chang and Ang were the original Siamese twins. They had a crazy life that started in Thailand and took them all around the world. They eventually bought a tobacco plantation in North Carolina, married sisters, and had 21 kids between the two of them. Like a lot of the non-separated conjoined twins we're talking about, they had a fascinating and very rich life that in some ways was probably better than it would have been if they'd been born singletons. Which, by the way, Hank, is the word for people who aren't conjoined, like, you know, us and most people. This takes me to my favorite conjoined twins of all time, Millie and Christine McCoy, who were known as the Two-Headed Nightingale. Millie and Christine were born into slavery in 1851, sold repeatedly, taken away from their mother, eventually kidnapped by a guy who toured them around the world while beating them. They were eventually taken back by one of their owners and reunited with their biological mother. And this slave owner and his wife taught Millie and Christine how to speak five languages and how to sing in perfect harmony, but also owned them as property and took all their money. But then when they were 13, the Emancipation Proclamation freed them and they went on to work sideshows and with Barnum and Bailey and made a ton of money. Certainly Millie and Christine were exploited throughout their lives, but it's hard to say that their lives would be better if they'd been separated at birth. And that's really what fascinates me about conjoined twins. We're so obsessed with the idea that unusual anatomies need to be made normal that we forget that unusual anatomies can have many advantages. That's not to say that conjoinedness is entirely desirable, just that the reality of conjoinedness, like most realities, resists simplicity. Lastly, nerdfighters, as I'm sure you're aware, there have been devastating floods in Queensland, Australia. There is a link in the doobly-doo to help people who've been affected by those floods. Don't forget to be awesome. Hank, I will see you on Friday.